the, the mahar is what makes the marriage true. The marriage gift is called sadaqat. Now, sadaqat should never be confused with sadaqat. Sadaqa is extra. You give charity. Sadaqa is you confirm the marriage is actually valid. In other words, when we give mahar, that's actually the confirmation of marriage. Nihla, interesting word, is actually used for when you give a woman a gift. When you give a woman a gift out of love, out of, you know, aspiration, and nihla could be like, like a romantic gift. So you're happily giving it. That's why they say, nahla al-mar'ata. He gave the woman the extra gift, above and beyond. Above and beyond. Yani fadlan al mahr In addition. So Allah says, give them their marriage gifts, but give them in a way that is quick and enthusiastic and out of love, that there's no like, ill feeling in your heart. And you know what happens? Especially in our culture, in Desi culture, and some other cultures they do this too, they go over the top and pick this ridiculous mahar amount. Because they say, that's what our daughter's worth. Our precious little princess. $50,000. $100,000. And you know when they do this? 10 minutes before the nikah is signed. Seriously? Yeah, of course. Everybody does 50000 And then you sign up for it. And you're like, because you know, Right now, the, the, everybody's eating the biryani and the baklava already. People are waiting outside. Pressure situation. So what do you do? All right, all right, all right, 50,000. And in the mind of the, the husband, he's like, yeah, it's a big number. It's not like I'm going to pay it. That's what's going on in his head. It's not like I'm going to pay it. Ajil or ajil? No, no, ajil, ajil. Make it late. Deferred payment. The imam is asked, when are you going to pay it? Oh, ajil. Said, we'll pay it later. Later, yani abadan. I ain't paying nothing. And every time the husband goes out with the wife, hey, you want to get some ice cream? Yeah, it counts towards your mahar though. <laughs> you know, I'm counting. It's like, it was like 25 ice creams already. It's like 49,500. <laughs> It'll sour the marriage. And then she's afraid to ask. Because if she asks, she's like, what, do you not love me? Is it all about the money for you? Is that all you care about? It creates a really ugly situation inside the marriage. First of all, pick a mahar that's reasonable. Don't pick an insulting mahar like, you know, a Twix bar. And say, so, well, Sahaba used to give a date for mahar. And one Sahabi actually helped another memorize the surah of the Qur'an. We should be like this. Those were Sahaba. When you do everything else like the Sahaba, then you quote the Sahaba, okay? So, <laughs> you, my friend, are no Sahaba. <laughs> you are no Sahabi. Give a reasonable, decent mahar. And I'm not a faqih. I'm not a faqih. So and this, you know, what should I give? Well, first of all, this question isn't answered in fiqh except in terms of advice. And even if it is answered, the general answer is, ask your conscience. If you were to die tomorrow, can she survive at least a month, two months, three months, without you being around? Can she pay the rent? Can she pay the utility bills? Can she get the groceries? Can she survive a year without you? Can she do that? Now, mahar is supposed to be a kind of security feature. That's what it's supposed to be. Some kind of you know, living security. So, have a decent amount. Have something. If you have nothing to offer, and she's not asking for anything, you know, ala rasi wal ayin. No problem. Twix bar. One for you, one for me. We're done. You know? <laughs> but it, it is supposed to be something that's decent. Something that's fair. And neither side feels shortchanged. And girls also, they should be like, they should be smart about this. They shouldn't be like, I love you so much, I don't want anything. No, 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 no. That's gonna change in about two years. <laughs> Should I ask for more? I knew I <laughs> So, don't put yourself in that position. You know, and I know it's, if you, like, you feel shy to ask, but look, it's a fair transaction. And you have to be happy with it. Don't let your parents, like, dictate it either, like, $80,000 and, you know, we want a yacht or... Actually, it was the best, there was this one family. They didn't even know how to pronounce it, but they were like, we want a yachet for our children. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna get it. <laughs> get your yachet. <laughs> but anyhow. But when you give, when you give women their dowry, give them happily. Give them happily. And don't try to, and don't just say, hey woman, I mean, I know I said 10,000, but can you, can you do with five? You know I'm going through a hard time right now and everything. You know what I do? Do I not do enough for you? And you're trying to emotionally like manipulate her into saying, okay, fine, five. 
Okay, less. Okay, give me later. You can't do that that stuff. Nihlatan, you have to give it. And for in tibna lakum, and if out of their own good will they give to you, tibna lakum an nafsin. From there, and tibna by itself is an nafs, but Allah added an nafs. So the impulse to give you a refund, you gave her the mahar ice cream. She says, okay, then you can have a lick. Okay, here. You don't even look at it. You don't even look at it. You don't say, oh, I'm so hungry right now. But you don't do that. You don't even give the impression. And she, out of her own goodwill, with no impression from you, no influence from you, hands you something, then don't make it a matter of your manhood. No woman, I ain't touching your money. Don't do that. Because Allah says, فَكُنُوهُ Then you can eat it. And how should you eat it? Hani'an. Hani'a or hani'a al-han. Ha, noon, hamza. That's the nasr. Han'un. Okay? It's something that comes your way without effort. And it's a gift. And honey at ta'am means food that goes down easy. And you know how in English you say, man, that hit the spot. That's honey. In other words, eat it and be like, ah, thanks. That feels kind of good. So you give her a monthly, let's say you set up a monthly thing, you give her a thousand a month for X number of years or X number of months or whatever it is. And you give her a thousand and she says, Here, here's five dollars back. Go get yourself some chocolate. Go. I say, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> You don't look at the rest of the bills. You just be happy about it. And then mari'a. Mari'a comes from mari'a. Mari'a is literally the canal that goes from your, your mouth or your throat to your stomach. That's mari'a. Mara'a ta'am actually means the food went down easy. Lirrijali nasibun. For men, especially, there, even for men, there's going to be a portion. Mimma tarakal walidan. From what both parents left behind. Wal aqrabun. And what the closest relatives left behind. Well, in Nisa'i, this is revolution in Arab world. This is a revolution in the Arab world when these ayat came down. Well, in Nisa'i, and even for women, nasibun, there's going to be a portion. Mimma tarakal walidani wal aqrabun. From what parents and close relatives left behind. You know why this was a revolution? Women themselves were considered property. In much of Arabia, not all of it, but in much of Arabia, they themselves were considered property. I told you before, they used to. When the, the, the father would die, the son in some cases would actually inherit the wives of, the other wives of the father. It was a disgusting practice called maqt. Maqt and wasa'a sabila. Okay? Wala tankihu ma nakaha aba'akum minan nisa'a. You know? And then Allah says, innahu kana maqtan. Fahisha dhan ma maqtan wasa'a sabila. Anyhow, so now women have a set right in inheritance. They have a right to property ownership. They have these kinds of civil rights. These civil rights came to the West early on or later? They came way later. This was completely revolutionary for its time. What's funny is now you turn around and say Islam is unfair to women. Islam was fair to women at a time when nobody, where people would have complained Islam gives too much to women. It's all a matter of what age you live in. If somebody in the kuffar heard these ayat and their complaint against Islam was, why is it favoring women so much? You, you, you turn the clock a little and now you come to the planet and, and people complain, why doesn't Islam give women anything? Women also have a portion, a good portion. Nasib is someone you, something you find with a marking on it. So it's, it's set for you. It's a set portion of what both parents and close relatives left behind. From what may be little out of it or maybe a lot. Nasib al-mafruda, it is a portion that has been mandated. 